watching Live at Spectrum. Tonight, Danny McDonald and Tina Bartle. Please welcome your host, Greg Lover. Again, another wonderful instalment of what is the only live music program streaming live to the internet, and we're doing it right here in Gippsland, uh, the most beautiful place on earth, as far as we're concerned. In fact, it was at 3 a.m. this morning. I was in Painesville playing at a party for the wonderful uh, wooden boat rally that they had down there. Then I went down to Seasborough, an unreal 90-mile beach. They had a beautiful calm day. They were swimming in the ocean, and I, now I'm here in the epicenter of of Gippsland in, in the valley, making this wonderful TV show. So. Why would you want to be anywhere else but uh, here, right here on Live at Spectrum here in Gippsland? Uh, Trent McCurdy is, actually joins us live in the studio uh, today. How are you, Trent? I'm very well, Brett. Yourself? You're looking smart. We, we had to prove that this is actually all completely live, so we had to show that Trent is actually doing all these voiceovers live. Mm. Now, yeah. when you, as a voiceover guy, do you speak like this when you're ordering food? Or is it, well, it... sometimes. Perhaps at the, uh, <laughs> at the drive-thru, I'll, I'll just put the voice in. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, places around Gippsland, what, what makes you want to, uh, you know, what, what inspires you to, to be in Gippsland? Well, look, I love Turalgan, of course, where we are uh, at the Live at Spectrum Studios, and uh, you can't look past Gumbaya Park, a, a beautiful place, and, <laughs> uh, and make many lavatory stops there on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, look, this is a wonderful place around Gippsland, and there's wonderful singer-songwriters in our region too, writing songs about this beautiful region as well. So that's what we're here to do. We're here to promote those singer-songwriters and get the story of our region out to the world. In fact, we've got people we want to say a quick hello to, uh, some friends of ours out there in the world today. Jennifer from Scotland. Scotland is tuning in uh, this evening. Steve from Vietnam. Hello, Steve. Uh, when I say evening, it's not evening in Scotland. Good morning, Jennifer, sorry. And uh, Liz and Phil from West Westminster Castle. Uh, watching Liz and Phil. Mm, very good. Uh, studio audience are going off here. Hello, studio audience. How are you? Hello. Hey. <laughs> are you comfortable? We've got new chairs in the Live Inspector uh, studio. Look at the wonderful new chairs we have here. I mean, uh, <laughs> but the studio audience that we had last month, they had our smaller chairs. They were, they were quite uncomfortable and they're going to be pretty peed off watching tonight, hearing about the new chairs. Fantastic. We're going to get straight into the show. Uh, we do want to hear from people who are watching because it is live. So we have an opportunity for people watching right now to be involved in the show. Trent, I believe you've got some details of some social media access to us tonight. Absolutely, Brett. You can text the show with questions uh, for yourself or for the performers. The number's 0411-48977. We're on Snapchat, Instagram and Twitter. The handle is uh, at Live at Spectrum. And you can search for us uh, on Facebook. Just search Live at Spectrum. So please, we want to hear from you tonight. This is your show. It's the Gippsland show and it's going out to the world. And we would like you to contribute to it as well tonight. We've got our first guest who is all warmed up and ready to perform tonight on Live at Spectrum. We have 17-year-old singer-songwriter Tina Bartle from Stratford. She started her career as a tap dancer. And she's here tonight to play the guitar and sing songs about our region. Please make a very warm welcome for Tina Bartle. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> yeah, great to be here. I'm super stoked. So, yeah, my name's Tina. I'm 17 from Strutty, as Brett said. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing three songs for you tonight. Uh, four songs. Three of them are original. One's a cover. Uh, this first one is an original that I wrote instead of doing my maths exam. I was writing the lyrics for this. Uh, <laughs> it's called Eden, and it's about kind of disconnecting with someone that you thought you already knew. Thorns 
It's kind of about uh, self-discovery, and I've chucked a fair whack of metaphors in there, just for the hell of it. It's late at night, and I should be asleep. Instead I find myself thinking,
Thank you so much. This next one, this next one is a cover. I'm still not sure uh, who wrote it. I was supposed to look this up after the Blues Festival, but I'll just say it's a Nina Simone song. Um, and it's called Feeling Good. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Rates drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. in the sea you know how I feel river running free you know how I feel blossom in the tree you know how I feel it's a new dawn it's a new day it's a new straighten up something before we get into uh, the rest of our little chat because uh, I believe you have to say something to Mr. Lee, your maths teacher. Yeah, um, look, Mr. Lee, you're a great... He's year right 10, there. Great year 10 and year 11 maths teacher, but I'm really sorry I didn't pay attention much in your class. <laughs> <laughs> you're a great guy, I'm sorry. And I thought, I thought maths and music were linked. You're oh. thinking classical music, mate. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're in year 12 yes, at the minute, and you're actually doing VC music performance as yes. a subject. I'm just wondering how is that subject helping you learn more about the performing art? Well, it's really great because I get to see so many other people doing what I'm doing. Like, there's other people in my age group also trying to get into kind of the music industry, and it just gives you experience in terms of what audiences like to see. Yeah, That's and, great. and you. You, you got other people you can play with at school. Oh and you, yeah, you're absolutely. Getting, and you're getting to share your, your yeah. ideas. Yeah, jamming is always the best part of the class. <laughs> <laughs> and you're getting out and about too in, in the community and doing yes. a lot of playing as well. Yeah, I play. Oh yeah, any anywhere that wants me, I'll go. 
<laughs> it's great. We uh, we actually met you with the Stratford Singer Songwriters yes. Night, which is a great opportunity for people to be performing as oh, well. Oh yeah. How was it? How was being able to perform to an audience such as you get there at Stratford? What does that mean to to a uh, performer such as yourself? Well, it kind of um, makes it kind of like safe haven for you to go, because I've been there a few times now, and honestly, they don't mind if you accidentally stuff up or forget the words or are just working on a song and you just want other people to hear it, they're really open to whatever you want to do. And it's a real, just great atmosphere. Well, you're doing great. And we're glad you, you failed Matt so you could write that song either. <laughs> we love that song too. Uh, your parents are actually here tonight. They take yes. no credit for your musical abilities. No, <laughs> they really don't. So where is it? <laughs> so where is, where is this all coming from? God. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, big fella. <laughs> <laughs> Now you've been recording recently and yes. you've actually uh, done it off on your own bat and yep. you've recorded this, you've called it Kick Me. Yes, because it's cool and ironic. <laughs> yeah. it's, please explain. <laughs> um, I just couldn't think of anything funny, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's pretty funny, I like it. It's, kick me. it's actually pasted on like a Kick Me song. Yep. Are, you, are you the school bully? Is this what you're trying to no. say? No, <laughs> quite the opposite. Tell us about the process of recording this album. Uh, well, pretty much... I had a heap of kids in my music class last year who were trying to get EPs and albums out there and they were just recording for the fun of it. And I thought, hey, I can do that. So I went down to uh, Brew the Music and I got a few songs recorded there and the stuff I didn't get recorded with Brent, I went and recorded with my own little setup at home. Isn't yeah. it great that we have these opportunities at Gippsland <laughs> to do these sorts of things? Um, have you got time to play one more song for us? Of course I do. Let's give another hand guitars. to Tina Bartel as she changes yeah. guitars. <laughs> While Tina's changing guitars, a quick plug, if you'd like to uh, get a copy of Kick Me, you can head to her Facebook site, which is Tina Bartle Music. You can head to SoundCloud for a listen with, you know, that's a Tina Bartle Music as well. And Triple J on Earth, guess what she calls herself? Tina Bartle, Tina Bartle Music. <laughs> Easy to find. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for Tina Bartle. <laughs> It's actually the first song I ever wrote and I was being really pretentious and I wrote it in a different uh, tuning because, you know, if you're going to write a song, you go hard or go home. Uh, <laughs> and this is called Bedroom Walls. And I kind of wrote it about um, early on in, in school and high school, I was bullied a lot, didn't have many friends. And so I just kind of stayed in my room a lot. And these are kind of the type of thoughts I had while I was doing it. And Writing this song kind of allowed me to just have a creative outlet for it all, I guess. So yeah, this is called Bedroom Walls.
Thank you so much. You've been wonderful. Thanks very much, Tina. We really hope we get to see Tina again in the near future. Thanks very much. That's Thank fantastic. You so what did you think, Trent? I had uh, chills. Yeah. And goosebumps. What a Still voice. Still do. I'll show you, but my jacket's too thick. It's hard to get off this thing. <laughs> uh, so if you want to get, get the album, it's out there. Just look for Tina Bartle Music, and I'm sure uh, Tina would love to hear from you out there. Uh, last Sunday, uh, we were lucky enough to uh, witness the CD launch. Michael War is a Mafra resident and has written a lot of songs about the area. He's uh, launched, the launch of his CD was down at Hayfield last Sunday and we were lucky enough to spend a little bit of time with Michael before the gig. Michael War is a unique and intelligent songwriter, storyteller and performer. His new album, What We Might Be, features songs that tell local stories from Gippsland and beyond. Live at Spectrum caught up with Michael at his album launch in Hayfield. Tell us the process, because that's the first time I've heard about this album, is the Hayfield Girl and the, the yeah. YouTube, you've got over, what, 10,000 views on there. Yeah. Now. What is it about that song that's touched so many? Um, well, I wrote it about my mum. Um, Obviously, if you you know you listen to the lyrics, it's it's a, it's about mum and coming from this town. And I suppose um, you know, as a, as the song said, they when I was growing up, there was no there was no love songs about girls from Hayfield. So. Um, but How do they I feel about the Hayfield girls when yeah. you say something like that. <laughs> well, because Dad was a Mafra boy, and so there was there was always that rivalry, like in the gentle ribbing, like when I was growing up, about you know. Oh, you know, you know about Hayfield girls, Mike. You've got to stay away from them. But it was all about, you know, it was all about hanging it on Mum. But they don't write pretty love songs for girls born in Hayfield. American women get songs about how they're adored. Has this been a new coming. process for you with this album that there have been more personal stories from your life? Yeah. Or have you always written that way? No, I, I think in my early 20s when I first left school, I was sort of trying to, I was trying to write generic, you know, pop songs like all of us chasing the, uh, trying to be famous. Yeah, right. And, um, and I, you know, I was, I became a dad quite, when I was quite young, so I gave up music in my, in my late 20s and, and just sort of focused on being a dad and being a teacher and, um, and I thought that my job now was to facilitate kids having artistic experiences and, um, and like I said mum got sick and then um, you know my, my son was going through a hard time and um, you know, that was affecting my wife so it was like the whole, the whole family was going through a hard time and I thought I need something in my world that's not, you know, that's not work and it's not home and it became music. Um, so I started writing again probably about four years ago. Yeah. yeah. And, and when I did, um, that Hayfield Girl song was like really, that was the, um, that was the eye opener for me that I, I could actually write songs about where I came from and rather than singing an American accent or writing about generic things, I could actually write about what I knew. And it's funny, like the, the more that I wrote about what I knew, the more people seemed to get it, yeah. seemed to be interested in what I was doing. You had to go confronting some uh, harder times that might have affected other people in your songs. That's really, I, it is really, um, it is sometimes really hard to play those songs, particularly, um, particularly, around, particularly around here, because I know that, that people um, might have known that person. I mean, I, you know, when I wrote the song Paul, it was about um, there was two of us on the bus, yeah, and we both we both got bullied, and um, and uh, and he did he did take his own life. In the end, I don't I don't know exactly the reason why, um, but I suppose it was about me writing the song was about me trying to work through those those feelings, you know, and because I've got a different perspective on bullying and stuff now because I work in a school and because I'm a dad and... Yeah, 
I'm from around here, and I yeah. like to think I know all the, every, all the places. There's a place around here called Math, Math King Hill. Yeah, right. Or is it Math yeah. King Hill? I'm it's, Math, it's Math King Hill. Yeah. It's actually named after a place in um, South Africa called, called Mafra King. And it's the hill behind Mafra High School, um, which is the most non nondescript, um, shrubby like, <laughs> gravelly hill. It's not, not a very pretty place at all. Um, but it was a place where you know we'd go for a cigarette at, at recess or we'd go start the party on Saturday night. Then we go, 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 go Looking for a better place to go But we've only time to kill On the crest of Math King Hey, uh, good luck with the day. You've already got what looks like a good 80 odd, but I'd say there's going to yeah. be a lot more. It's a nice day yeah. as well. Yeah, it's lovely. So I hope you're enjoying the playing and you, you get you. some emotional response. And Thank thanks you. for having some time with us on no. the spectrum. Thank you so <laughs> much for inviting me on. Yeah, and good luck with everything. CD's called What We Might Be. It's by Michael War. A fantastic listen. I've had this in the, my car going over and over again. He's a fantastic lyricist. The, uh, the stories are all local, from, especially from around that Hayfield, uh, Mafra area. Song in there about Morwell. It's just a really great listen. I really can't uh, say it enough. Please get your hand on that CD. Go to, um, I keep wanting to say Mark War. He was handy in slips, wasn't he? <laughs> no, it's, it's Michael War. <laughs> MichaelWar.com.au and get your hands on that CD. It's a fantastic... Uh, choice. Our next performer has had 20 plus years experience in singer songwriting and performing and he's here tonight. He's uh, raised in Churchill and resides here in Latrobe Valley and we're very excited to introduce Danny McDonald. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, this is a song um, which I released as a single last year. It's about Melbourne. It's about the, uh, the Yarra River and the effect that it has in terms of dividing the north and the south of Melbourne. And it's called The Melbourne Divide. Too thick to drink here Too thin to plow It's a Melbourne Divide North or your south The mud and the refuse God knows what else It's not a water supply It's not a picture of hell History that she holds Culture down it flows And it breaks up the buildings And it breaks up the streets The murky facade Creates a mystique Visible river, industrial dump. She flows upside down, chokes Pine Grove. The history that she holds. down it flows steady as she goes the culture down it flows
Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, um, a lot of my songs are about time and place and um, uh, many of the songs I've released over the years have either been about Melbourne or about Gippsland, which is where I've spent a lot of my time over the last 40 odd years. Um, and so this next one is another song about Melbourne. We'll get to Gippsland a bit later on. <laughs> and um, this is a single I put out um, a few years ago and it's called In Melbourne Tonight and it's just a bit of a collage of uh, memories of when I was a young child. It's Kay to sing in the Morton Bay Figs in Melbourne tonight. And I can still hear those rattling trams and the smell of the laneway jasmine vines. And I remember, as a young boy, cooped up in the back of a Datsun 180B. Punt Road, South Yarra. Heading home from the cricket at the MCG. A town divided by... There's an old bloke playing a squeeze box up on the steps of Flinders Street Station. And some homeless bloke painting suspect portraits of tourists on vacation. New high rise developments, ATCO huts, maintenance shuts. Ah, the way he's ripping the bloody joint down. The old family home back in Benson Street, Surrey Hills. Wouldn't you love to own it now? Imagine what we'd get for it now. The cranes are tied and tied the flat pad. Up and down all day like a swan sand street. The weather boards work hard in Melbourne There's a faded couch on every veranda Cathedral spies and the architecture Exotic plants in a concrete Thanks so much. Okay, as I mentioned before, I, um, I uh, have also written a number of songs about Gippsland and Terrelgan and Latrobe Valley and broader Gippsland over the years. And this song was um, uh, on my first solo album, which came out about um, 12, 13, 14 years ago, something like that. 
Um, and this was a single and it's called Living in Terelgan. So you can probably um, identify with this one. Topic of conversation has kept us entertained for years. The gardens overflow with dark silence. The houses are filled with chrome and dust. The government drives the people out in droves. Hey Trent, well, I should be reminding people just straight away that uh, you can get on social media to ask any questions that you want of that you want of Danny. Anything you want of Danny, you can wash your car, paint your house. If yep. you've got any questions, we'd <laughs> like to hear goes. from you now. Trent, what are those details again? Uh, on Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter, our handle is at Live at Spectrum, or you can just search Live at Spectrum on Facebook. And we have had a heap of uh, questions and feedback coming in uh, from the show or for the show tonight so far. Well, so we may have a few questions for Danny already. Do you want, do you want to hit him with one now? Well, actually, I, I won't. Hit, I will say we've uh, had a, a tweet in from Scotland. Uh, Queen Gallifrey is uh, the lady's name. Totally in awe of Tina. Can totes relate to bedroom wall? Such an <laughs> awesome talent, which is fantastic. Uh, Rob Cairns, fantastic Tina. We love your music. And Angelo Cerritos, I think it is, who's watching on his television, loved Danny. Wants to know if you've got a fan club. <laughs> no, no, but I have a Facebook page. Fantastic. <laughs> We're going to get everyone onto that, Danny, after tonight. Now, we've seen you perform over many years uh, as a soloist and in groups as well. Mm -hmm. What do you prefer? Uh, I like a bit of both. I like the, the diversity of playing solo and playing with bands as well, so, yeah. And you, what, what is it about writing songs as compared to going out and playing covers that drives you to want to keep going? Yeah, look, I've always been pretty much driven by that creative process, so I sort of react and respond to the environment around me, I guess. So songwriting is, is the reason I play music. And I noticed when you were singing then, you got the Australian accent going on, which we all do and we love, but a lot of singers don't sing with an Australian accent. I was wondering, is that something, something you've always done? Or it has that is. been a conscious effort somewhere No, online? it's not conscious really, it's just something that I've always done. So, and I guess as the years have gone on, um, my lyrics have become more conversational. So I guess, you know, given that they're um, you know, more conversational, it's, uh, it's a bit more like talking. So that accent does come through. In your second yeah. song, you mentioned the house in Surrey Hill. Yeah, yeah, that was my great grandfather's house. Yeah, that I was referring to in that one. So, have you looked up the price of it? <laughs> <laughs> What's it called more recently? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah I, I love that line. Yeah. Yeah, you wish you still had that house. Yeah. Uh, now, coming back to Gippsland, now here we are. We're supporting live original music, yeah. and you've been around the trap. So I just want to pick your brain a little bit. What What do you think that we should be doing as a community to support 
this, this kind of... I think uh, this kind of thing is awesome. I think what you're doing um, with this program is exactly what we need because I think for many years, um, you know, something that I've observed is it's always been really difficult being a, a regional-based artist. Um, so my, uh, my um, career, I guess, over the years has always been based in the city. Um, and I still play in the city a lot, um, you know, every other weekend. Um, but, you know, being able to play locally is just fantastic. And there's a lot of great talent, so I think it's, uh, it's really good, um, yeah, to have these sorts of opportunities. Does the setup we have in here tonight remind you of any venues you've played at? <laughs> Reminds me of a, a gig I did on Hey Hey It's Saturday, actually. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> We've got John Nine. Blackman over there on the microphone. <laughs> yeah. Where's Dickie me, D? Me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. a very similar sort of feel to that sort of thing? Similar feel, yeah. We're, yeah, trying, to get so the, we're trying to get the pub feel. Yeah, yeah it's a good vibe. It is. A, thanks very much. Yeah. I did it myself. <laughs> um, you've been recording. <laughs> we're a team. It's a team effort. Everyone is there going, Brett Glover, he's up himself. No, I'm all right. All right. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we on. Uh, you've been recording recently. Yep. With the Little Murders. I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that process. Yeah, um, so Little Murders have been around for a long time. Um, so I think when they formed, I was about two or three years old. So, um, uh, but they're a band I really loved for many years. So to, to actually join that band and then make a record with them has been a, a privilege and a, and a lot of fun for me. Um, so the album is uh, almost finished. We've been working on it for nearly a year now. I think we've got one session left and then uh, it'll be all done and the album will be out hopefully later this year. How yeah, does an opportunity like that arise as a band that you've uh, admired and you get to go um, and record with them? Yeah, I think, um, so I, I used to play in a band called P76 with my friend Jeff, who's here tonight. Um, G'day, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go on. Oh I'll talk to him in a minute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, I, I guess, you know, we just started playing shows together back in probably late 90s, early 2000s with Little Murders and came, became quite good friends with them. And then gradually over the years, I started doing some fill-ins with them and then, you know, eventually one of their guitarists left and I joined, so. Let's get Jeff up here quickly. Come on, Jeff. Come up. Yeah. Come on, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got two, two boys from P76. Uh, take us back to the, to the 90s. What was the scene like then compared to now? Um, actually, we were just reminiscing about some of this stuff earlier, actually, outside. But, um, look, I think that the music scene's pretty healthy at the moment. But for me, I think it was a, it was a really... A great time for Australian music, late yeah. 90s, early 2000s, for sure. Um, There's a lot of great venues and really good bands, um, you know, and I guess a lot of those bands I've s maintained contact with and we're still playing with these days. So. Yeah. Do you miss it, Jeff? Um, well, I... I we've probably got to get you on a microphone. I don't think we've got any lapels on, but this isn't, this isn't rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> is this one on? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> well, I've spent a lot of time playing in uh, uh, cover bands for the last 10, 15 years, I guess. So um, I, I do miss the old days, the 90s and P76 and uh, uh, the Jericho days we were talking about. That's been about 20 years mm. now since, since that's been, mm. been happening. So What are the chances it's, of getting the old band back together oh, for well, a Live at Spectrum <laughs> special? We, 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 <laughs> Anything's possible. possible, isn't it? Yeah. Anything's we possible? Just, we just uh, were uh, discussing before the fact that it's 20 years this month since the debut yeah. Jericho EP was released, yeah, so. Very special moment, and you're here yeah. performing in the uh, Latrobe Valley tonight. Thanks, Jeff. And we're going to let Danny... <laughs> <laughs> Good sport. Thanks for doing that, Jeff. <laughs> but Danny McDonald is going to play a fourth. You've done two songs about Melbourne. Yep. One about the valley. You're going to even it out now? Yeah, uh, well, this is, yeah, that's right. Yep. So this, this next song is called This Old House, and it's about a house that I lived in about a kilometre up the road from here, actually, um, for seven or eight years, um, uh, until about ten years ago. And um, yeah, I wrote this song in that house, and it was uh, it, it appeared on my second solo record. Not as expensive as your Surrey Hills house. No, but pretty good <laughs> not <altogether>. nearly. <laughs> this old house. Here's Danny McDonald. Thanks. Thank you. I've paid for years 
tired roof and loose driveway and Standing here for twice my age This old house is seen I'm coming Some move on This old house will be here Long after we're gone Red gum stumps and fibro sheets The plumbing's gal but it don't leak Facing south on Shakespeare Street A start road to Terralgan Creek This old house is seen I'm coming some move on This old house will be here long after we come This old house is seen, I'm coming, some move on. This old house will be here long after we're gone. Thanks very much, Ted. Sammy McDonald, thanks. thanks very much. Thanks. How's the switchboard going there, Trent? We're lining up. Uh, we've just uh, we've had a tweet come in from Live at the Bundy, loving Danny, great Australian songwriter. Thanks very much Absolutely. for the tweet. Well, we're Thank very you. lucky to have people like Danny in our community. Thanks very much, Danny, Cheers. for being thanks on Live at the Spectrum tonight. Another round of applause for Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's music festival season currently in Gippsland. There's been uh, the Bulara Folk Festival, which was actually on yesterday. Uh, the Bruthen Blues Festival was on around about two weeks ago. And last week at Painesville, they had their annual music festival and Live at Spectrum were there to speak to audience members and musicians that participated in the event. The 2016 Painesville Music Festival took place over the last weekend in February and featured a diverse assortment of local and visiting musical acts who performed at a range of locations. The Live at Spectrum crew were there to find out more. And how, how much of a relief is it watching today when it's all actually unfolding after six it's, plus months of organising? It's awesome. It's, it's really awesome. You know, you've, Angela has put in so much hard work and to see this as a final result is just fantastic. Really, we just, it's really exciting. It's very yeah. exciting. And the weather's perfect and just makes the day. It's painful weather. Well, we have uh, all this beautiful waterway. Um, how often do you see a festival that's on the water? Yeah, it's all about trying to get the community together and I suppose celebrate the town, uh, look after the traders and, and get people into the town to see what a great place we, we live in. I bought the business four and a half years ago and they did live music mainly jazz, probably every six weeks. And I thought, no, there's a lot more music around than that. And the music festival's gone the same way because it was a jazz festival and it was dying. So they saw in wisdom, which this week proves it because it's going really well, is that uh, there's a lot of a lot of good music out there and there's some wonderful musicians. The guys that you're getting to play in your bar, like they're, they're all heavy hitters in the music industry. Def How do you get them to play in your bar? Uh, it's just grown over that four and a half years. Um, we get music pushed under the door, Facebook, word of mouth. You go away and talk a lot, send other people to us and uh, people come back over, say, the yearly time. Uh, Eight Ball Aitken, for example, in that four and a half years has probably been here five times. And you know, yeah. It's great. I haven't been here for about three years, I think, and um, it looks like it's grown, grown quite successfully since then. Uh, I love it. It's a great little town, beautiful little spot. Are we going to have any raucous behaviour in the wine bar tonight? No, oh, most likely, yeah. How are you going to do that? How are you going to achieve this? I just do what I do when you know, people react to it. 
outside you thing. It? Atmosphere. This is great, relaxing. And what sort of things have you seen today? What have you enjoyed about tonight? Oh, just relaxing, no kids. You know? And the first guy with the long beard, the wizard. He was amazing, I thought he was good. What did you like about the wizard? Just his piano playing, I thought it was amazing, and his, um, his actual singing as well. Yeah, so both, and just his uh, choice of songs, because we all know those songs, so there you go. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's a great opportunity to, uh, you know, that um, people can showcase local music as well as, you know, blow-ins as well, and opportunity to, to get out in the sun by the lake here and uh, on Macmillan Strait and enjoy the fantastic area and uh, the great music that we've got around the area. How many music festivals have you been to where you can actually park your boat and watch the music? Well, this is the only one you can, I think. This is the only one I've ever been, ever been, ever been to. We've done two slots. We did one this morning at uh, 9.30 for half an hour, and then this afternoon we've done another half an hour. So um, we had the pipe band going, and we've also got a, uh, a folk band as well. They did a couple of numbers as well. I feel sorry for anyone who's working today. Okay, look around. Oh, we just think it's a great day, a great atmosphere. Lay back, sit out in the sun and watch some good music. And what is your cost? What's the cost to be here today? Uh, the petrol to get here. This is absolutely free. I mean, how, yes. how do they afford to do this? I don't know. It's one of the wonders of the world. Yeah. All year round, this is a this Yeah, is a the only time we don't tend to do music is in the last uh, two weeks of December because people are too busy, you know, companies, work, family, whatever. I think the festival is also all about promoting our local, our local ta talent. Um, yes, we do get people in from far and wide, but we do like to try and promote our local talent because, uh, you know, there's lots of kids out there with the schools that, you know, they're up and coming musicians. It's great to see them get, get onto a stage and, and play their music. And hasn't the weather turned on around Gippsland the last few weeks? So these music festivals are having uh, record numbers as of late. Now uh, to the internet, this is the, where you are currently watching us right now. We have had this opportunity for people to give us messages via the Facebook page or via Twitter. And we've had a, a couple of comments. Sandra from Greensboro has been watching tonight. And she said, Danny was fantastic. And I tend to agree. Yeah. And Brett, you look great in your jacket. Don't agree with that one, but anyway, <laughs> we do our best. And uh, for, uh, this one's for Tina. I've got a question for Tina from Rebecca Thomas. Uh, what are Tina's musical influences and artists that she likes? Can you answer that one, Tina? Wow. Um, okay, so musical influences. A big one would have to be the Beatles. Yeah. Um, there's also a band called Ballpark Music that's a Melbourne band. They're in and around the place at the moment, and they're, they're kind of an influence and a band that I like. And... There's this group called the Smith Street Band that I went and saw at the Corner Hotel a couple of months ago, and they are amazing. And right. yeah, so that'd be. We'll just say the second one, the ball. Ballpark music. Ballpark. Have you come across ballpark yeah, music? Yeah, they're, they're a cool band. Yep. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what drives you? What's influencing you these days? Uh, so 20 years it might have been, you know, Bon Jovi 20 years ago. No, 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 no. Actually, <laughs> never. <laughs> never. Oh, fair enough. Who's <laughs> 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 influenced you? Um, oh, over the years, I guess. Um, Oh, heavily influenced by Paul Kelly, um, guys like uh, Mick Thomas, um, bands that died pretty, the Sunny Boys, those sorts of bands, the Stems. Yeah. And, and you can hear that in your work as well. So we love the, the stuff that you did tonight, Danny and Tina Thank Bartle, you. Danny McDonald. Let's give them one more. Live yeah. at Spectrum yeah. Tonight. Anything you'd like to add, John Blackman? Uh, well, let me say, uh, just uh, throughout the week, uh, you'll be able to see the replay of this show on uh, YouTube, so look out for that. Just go to the Live at Spectrum website, liveatspectrum.com.au. Share the word, hashtag Live at Spectrum. Let us know uh, that you're watching and let everybody else know that the show exists. Yes, we need more viewers each and every month or we shut down. <laughs> That's how it works. No, we don't really. We're going to keep going. We don't care if nobody's watching. We're enjoying this so much. But people are watching. I'm not going to stop talking now. Next month, <laughs> the Amnesia Blues Band. We're going to have a band here in the studio. We're going to fit them in somehow. We also have uh, a monster of uh, blues music, Mike Ellington, coming in. Yeah. Big, tall man, huge voice. Someone's a fan over here. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, please, uh, during them in the meantime, as uh, Trent was saying, get on Facebook, get the word out about Live Expectrum. We, we really want uh, more people watching and supporting these great, this great talent that we have right here in Gippsland. 
Thanks very much for watching tonight. You've been a great audience. How are the chairs? Yeah. So comfortable. Oh, beautiful. You can all walk home now. Fantastic. <laughs> Have a great night. We'll see you next month on Live at Spectrum. Good night. <laughs>